I found this car in a barn about four years ago. The previous owner restored it mostly. It was sitting in the barn for about 10 years. We got such a good deal and had to pick it up. Hello everybody, my name's Eric and this is my 74 VW Super Beetle. machine all right you guys 1974 VW Super Beetle <laughs> slightly modified and when I say slightly modified I mean it's like moderately modified uh, and the owner of this car Eric has big plans and he's gonna stick a supercharger in that but I'll let him talk about that let's go for a drive and see how it performs Back in gear. Oh, it, it goes pretty well. The carburetor's very finicky. So you really gotta ease into throttle to get smooth power. But once you do, 75 horsepower has never felt so good. It revs to a staggering 5,000 RPM. Oh man, this is great. Now I'm getting the hang of it. I just gotta put myself in that 911 mindset, you know? Lift off, going into the corner, the back rotates around. Of course, it's all happening in slow motion in the Beetle. The muffler's literally scraping on the ground, unfortunately. I'm sorry, Eric, I definitely scraped your muffler a couple times. Uh, but I can't help it, it's that far off the ground. What do you want me to do? smells a lot like gasoline. If I, if I start saying some funky stuff at the end of this review, you know why. It's because I'm high as a kite. <laughs> I'm a classic kind of guy. I really like the old stuff, everything manual. I'm not opposed to getting 80s and 90s cars, but I'd rather the old ones. When I picked up this car, it was pretty much as you see it from the exterior, except it has different wheels and brakes. Other than that, it's how I found it. So for all those wondering, a Super Beetle has McPherson strut front end, then it handles way nicer than the old torsion bar setups the Bugs used to have. It also has a curved windshield. Some Super Beetles had flat ones, but this one has a curved one. So this car currently has a 1641cc engine built by Bunnies and Bugs in Chilliwack and I've got a supercharger kit by Joe Blow and that's going to be put on in the next few weeks here and I'm aiming to get in the 14 second range at the quarter mile. It currently does 18.5 and the original motor did 23 seconds which is pretty slow. It's basically the first modern mass produced car and is the most mass-produced car in the history of the automobile. There's over 21 million of these that were built from 1938 to 2002. It is a Super Beetle, which is a whole two inches longer than the normal Beetle. I apologize for the yelling, you guys. It's very, very loud in here. So a brief history on the Beetle, if you guys don't know. Uh, back in 1938, this man named Adolf Hitler had the concept and original idea for a vehicle for the masses that every person could drive and afford 
in preparation for the new Autobahn highway system across Germany. Thus, the Beetle was born. Now, the lead engineer on the Beetle project, his name was Ferdinand Porsche. So obviously that's where the 9-11 jokes come in. So this and the 9-11 are basically the only two modern rear engine vehicles. Ref match it. He's into the throttle. Third gear, 4200. 4,500 and shift. Wow, this thing is <laughs> a little bit of work to drive. Steering wheel's really small, which is nice. I would say it feels like a go-kart, but it's not, it's not all that planted. <laughs> like the steering, little bit on center here, that does absolutely nothing. But then, because it is manual steering, you feel immediately when it actually starts moving the front wheels. Uh, the, the pedal box down here is super small, so even with smaller feet and smaller shoes, when you come up off the gas pedal, you almost always like scrape against the brake pedal. And then you gotta watch out for the high beam light, which is in a very interesting location, below the clutch pedal. So to hit the high beams, you have to literally put your foot around and behind the clutch pedal and tap, tap this light. I mean, <laughs> automotive technology has come a long way. Case in point with this vehicle. Pretty cool car. I mean, obviously this car is like a kind of a, kind of a joke, I guess, in the automotive world, like from punch buggy. I mean, the way these things are, they've, they've been immersed in pop culture over the years and have been made, uh, made into this really cool kind of classic cult following of a vehicle. It drives fine, aside from the spine crushing seats here that are literally killing my back every mile. It's a really fun car to drive. <laughs> it's really fun. The experience is pretty great. There's no modern amenities. All you got is yourself in the car. It's really rough. New Golfs do interest me, especially the new Golf R and actually the new GTIs come in a Viper Green, which actually the 75 Super Beetles had as well. Uh, I personally dropped the engine to have it built the first time. It's four bolts, three wires, fuel line and a throttle cable. Super simple, anyone could do it. Uh, with the supercharger, I should be getting about 100 horsepower and 150 foot-pounds of torque, which will really wake up this car and I can't wait to have it done. So on the interior from a stock bug, it's got no rear seats, it's got an Equus tack, vintage speed shifter, a formulaing steering wheel, and some RCI bucket seats. They are meant for the drag strip and I would not recommend ever getting them for your daily driver. Uh, this is a square wheel setup. These are 4x130 bolt pattern, which is a VW bug bolt pattern and some old Porsches had it too. Uh, these wheels are made in Italy. These are unknown wheels, I can't find any info on them. So if anyone has any info, please comment down below and let me know. Oh, my back is killing me. Oh, I'm going to need some physical therapy after this drive, you guys. Not good. <laughs> now I know why Germans are all miserable. seriously but you kind of have to because this is this holds a massive chunk of automotive history within its soul like this car is so important to the modern automobile and especially the modern 911 even it roars though pops a little bit in the back if you're looking for a fast classic car buy an American muscle car, and even then it's not gonna be that fast, from this era. Like this is the last car that I would expect to take to the drag strip, but more power to you, Eric, for doing something like this. I mean, it's a really cool build. I mean, I don't think it's like anyone's duty to restore and keep these cars alive. There are so many of them. Now there are a lot of differences from year to year with the Beetle. 
and probably a lot of you guys are the same as me in that you see a beetle, it's a beetle, right? But we already had a guy come up and he's like, oh, is this a 74? And yeah, it's a 74. Like he just knew right away. Uh, I mean, the nerds are out there. As with any cult kind of following with a vehicle, no ABS systems to fail you or traction control. You're gonna lose your voice though. Seems very healthy though. I've got to give you props, Eric. It feels very healthy. You know, you guys, sometimes you kind of have to slow down and appreciate the finer things in life. Appreciate where your modern sports cars came from. Sid, I'm talking to you. Appreciate where your 911 Targa came from that Mackay Sun later turned RWB, you know? And you realize just how short of a time in human history the automobile has been around. Like, the automobile is such a recent invention amongst humans, it really is. And nothing will put that in perspective like driving a 74 Beetle. I've pretty much just daily driven this car and taken it around. Uh, I've driven it to Seattle before, and that was an interesting trip. Going there was windy and rainy, and I only was able to do 80k an hour, and on the way back, the wind was with me, so I was able to keep at normal speeds. I just want to give a big shout out to all those people that have helped build this car, especially Bunnies and Bugs and Extreme Dreams Auto, and anyone else that has helped, just a big thank you. I've never sat in a more uncomfortable vehicle. Never in my life. But again, never in my life have I ever had so much joy in such an uncomfortable vehicle. Not a performance car. This is not a sports car. When I make these 911 jokes, this is not, I'm, this is like 10% of a 911, you know? If that tells you anything about rear engine cars, a lot of people will tell you it's a flawed engine setup but then Porsche still pretty consistently holds the top production car lap records on pretty much every track in the world, so. <clears throat> and my voice is gone as well, so. Again, if you haven't already, hit subscribe. Check me out on Instagram, at Roads Untraveled. You can keep up to date every day with basically what we're shooting behind the scenes, what we're doing around here. Thanks, guys, for watching.